happy Sunday. Welcome back to me and my shadow. Come along for a little Sunday morning ride. this video is fine and everybody will. I have found that here in Texas anyway it's better to get out early in the morning in the summertime. It is if you notice I fixed the clock it is 9, actually 9.15, 9.14 in the morning. And I'm already sweating. That's alright. There ain't nobody out. Except for people like me that like to ride. And probably your average churchgoers, of which I will confess, I am not an average churchgoer. I used to be, but that's a story for a whole different time. Hey guys, I cleaned my windscreen. What do you think of that? And I also forgot my gloves. Good thing I'm not known as Mr. Safety. Beautiful day for a ride. Beautiful. to say this morning. Just want to share the ride with you guys. Before we get into music and riding, I definitely do want to thank everybody that has subscribed to my channel. I know you don't have to. I'm not a professional. I see some of these moto vloggers guys and it just <laughs> I'm ooh, way far away from being that professional. About about 159 of you, 160 of you. I get enough to You know, punch the old subscribe button, and I thank you for that. I really do. It's the first time that this channel, and you enjoy the videos, feel free to subscribe or don't. It's fine either way. The real purpose of this channel is to do nothing more. And share the joy of riding a Honda Shadow 750 American Classic Edition with you. It's really and maybe share some adventures. Let's go down Meadow Road and let's see what's down Meadow Road. Maybe share some adventures with you. Shadow 750. I know that I got some comments from a lot of you guys saying that you were purchasing one or that you just purchased a Honda Shadow. 
some are arrows, some are, I think, a spirit. Is that one of them? I know that some of you actually own pretty much the same bike I do. The Ace. But I think all the shadows are awesome. I did want to address one comment. Someone left me and it was a very thoughtful comment, so don't get me wrong. I enjoy all comments. Whether you agree with what I say or not, I still enjoy the comments. But someone said, well, why don't you just go ahead and get an 1100? Because they do make the Shadow in a little bit bigger version, the 1100. And to be honest with you, I never really thought about it before. I gravitated immediately towards the VTX 1300 or 1800. I don't know why. They're big bad machines, but I'm sure that the 1100 is a really good bike as well. It's a shadow. It's got that reliability. It's got, you know, probably everything that anybody that comes to this channel to watch this channel for needs, right? So that's definitely a possibility. But guys, I want to go big. Err. I was watching, um, oh, what's this gentleman's name? SRK Bikes and Beards. I think his name is. I don't know. SRK Cycles. Something like that. I believe he's out of, like, Pennsylvania. He does a ton of reviews on motorcycles. And he was talking about the VTX 1300. talking about the power that it gives you and the torque the fact that it's really easy for two people to you know to ride two up with passengers you don't have any problem getting up hills or you know with the extra weight added on and things like that so hello so but he was like, the only reason that I wouldn't buy a VTX 1300 is because there's the 1800 out there. And I was like, he's right. He's like, there's going to be a certain amount of people that are going to buy the VTX 1300 and go, dang, I should have got the 1800. It's a beast. And don't get me wrong. I'm not trading in the shadow. Shadow staying with me, boys and girls. Like I said, I'll be buried with my shadow. <laughs> but I am going to go big. I'm going to go to the VTX 1800. I do understand that it is a much bigger bike. It's very torquey. It's got a lot of power. So... And it handles different. It's not as light as the VT, excuse me, as the Shadow. It's like, I think he said, 750 pounds wet. It's got big old jugs on it. Gives it some added weight. But guys, why did Honda stop making the V-Twin? I don't understand. I mean, did they just say, well, here's your heavy cruiser. Now we're done with that? I love the V-Twin engines, man. I love the rumble. The air, it's not air-cooled, the liquid-cooled engine. I don't understand why they stopped making them. But that doesn't stop us from buying them. I heard that the VTX and even the Shadows are getting more and more rare and hard to find. I guess there's two schools of thought on the Shadow. I get not really hater comments, but people that really dislike the Shadow. And then there's people that really love the Shadow. Um, 
I've had comments from folks saying that the shadow is always in the shop, it's always broke down, there's always problems, there's parts that are hard to get, um, you know, that it's really a POS. And I, I guess I'm sorry if that was your experience. I have not had that experience with the on the shadow. Matter of fact, my experience has been the exact opposite. It's been nothing but good things, very few breakdowns, and just a all-around solid motorcycle. I mean, for a commuter bike, something that you got to take back and forth to work every day, something that you like to just go out and ride like I do, you can't really go wrong with the old Shadow. I know, I'm a broken record, but it's true. It's very true. That's right guys, we are going down my new favorite road again. So, I'm going to shut up. Maybe put on a little music and ride. Come with me guys. Let's just enjoy the ride.
so I thought I would take this opportunity because I've been thinking about it. Give you a little bit of background history on me and my shadow. I might have told this story before and if I have, well, I guess I apologize. Let's go down Eden Road. Let's go this way. Let's see where it takes us. So I'm not sure how many of you started your motorcycle love affair, your motorcycle riding career. I mean, I think sometimes it's born out of necessity. Um, I know of people that really couldn't afford anything else except for to get themselves a, you know, kind of a used motorcycle that would do the trick and get them back and forth to work. I totally respect that completely, by the way. There are those that, I don't know, I guess, kind of grew up with it in the family, you know? And that was me. My whole experience with motorcycles began probably when I was around, oh, how was it, maybe 10? Oh, uh, tree tunnel guys, here we go. I wish I could find a place that had miles of this around here. Anyway, so I was about 10 years old and I used to, I grew up in Nebraska and most of my family are farmers. Uh, my cousins and uncles and such were farmers in Iowa. But anyway, we would go visit quite often my aunt and uncle that lived in a place called Madrid, Iowa. Leave a comment if you're familiar with Madrid, Iowa. Anyway, they had a farm in Madrid, Iowa, and they were very successful farmers. So their children, my cousins, they had three boys, never really wanted for much. And you know how you, when you were a kid, you had like your favorite cousin, the one that you couldn't wait to see that was so cool or you looked up to? Well, that was my cousin, Tom. And my cousin Tom had every toy that a boy could want. He had motorcycles, he had ATVs, he had a snowmobile. And going out to the farm and spending some time was absolutely, well, a joy for somebody like me. That the closest thing I came to from my house was a... BMX motor, not motorcycle, a BMX bike, but one of the cheap kind that you got from like Kmart with the sprocket that was so hard to turn it felt like you were constantly going uphill all the time. Yeah, that was me. I was that kid. So going out to my cousin's farm was always a blast because we could ride motorcycles. And I think that's where my first true experience, taste came from, riding dirt bikes out there, out in the farm, out in gravel roads and stuff like that. Now, of course, you know, safety was, you're going to live forever when you're 10, 11, 12 years old. My cousin, I think he's like six years older than me, six or seven years older than me. So anyway, we would get out there and we would ride and that's how I learned basically how to actually function a motorcycle. As far, I'm going to say by function. See, I just popped the clutch there until I learned well. <laughs> but that's how I learned how a motorcycle functions and how to use the clutch and things like that. He had Kawasaki's, Yamaha's, he had a 750, he had a uh, 600, I believe at one point. But mostly little Enduros, you know, little 250's, things like that. Yamaha 250's, dirt bikes. But that's how I got my first taste, and I absolutely love the speed and the exhilaration of getting on a motorcycle. So I guess you could say I was bitten from a very, very young age 
first time my mom you're never getting a motorcycle you'll kill yourself on it and it's true i was very irresponsible at the time but that always stayed in the back of my brain you know as you get older you don't go out there and see your family as much you know friends in school and the rock band you're in in high school becomes ten times more important than going out to the farm and doing all that so life went on for me for quite some time joined the military did my time in the military and when I got out one of my uncles as a hobby fixed up motorcycles and he sold me a Yamaha 650 or six yeah it was a 650 Yamaha orange tank crazy looking seat definitely I believe it was like a 19 gosh guys I want to say 81 82 day I was out riding and I wasn't really shall we say a safety sally in any way shape or form but I was out riding and it just had begun to rain coming up to an intersection kind of like I'm coming up to now it's hurrying a little bit because I didn't want to get wet I wanted to get home and you guys know that when it very first begins to rain all the oil and slick rises Especially when it very first starts to rain. So, I came to the intersection. There was a pickup truck coming the other way. I had the right way, but he ran the light. I panicked, threw on the brakes. The rear end split out for me, and I went down, sliding on my side through the intersection. The truck luckily got stopped, but the tire tread was this close like you see my fingers here that's how close the tire tread was to my face I'll never forget staring at that tire tread of that truck and seeing a little pebble stuck between the treads so I shakily got off my bike the gentleman apologized to me I got back on my motorcycle and limped at home parked it in the garage and I said, never, ever, ever again will I ride a motorcycle. Too dangerous. Almost got killed. And I lived with that fear for quite some time, guys. Until I was in my 40s. My, somewhere in my 40s, my father-in-law had this motorcycle. He had gotten out. He bought it. He retired and he bought this motorcycle for my blue gentleman in Tennessee or somewhere. Very well maintained bike, it still is well maintained. But he bought this motorcycle. I think he rode it once or twice and then he put it in his barn. I think he got scared. It has been laid down. Um, there are some scratch marks on it and stuff like that. And I think what happened, though he'd never admit it, is he laid it down, he got scared, and got off of it, and decided that he didn't want to ride anymore. I knew it was out there, and he agreed to sell it to me, and the rest is history. I know, boring story time. You guys are like, I wish you would just shut up and ride, I enjoyed that much better. But I thought I'd give you guys a little bit of background. Now, in the meantime, after I got this motorcycle, I rode it till I got really used to it again. Um, and then... My wife convinced me that I needed to take the motor motorcycle safety course, which I said, I don't need that. I know what I'm doing. Let me tell you something, guys. That motorcycle safety course was probably one of the best things I've ever done. It allowed me to get my motorcycle endorsement on my license, and I think that depends on your state. More importantly, it taught me the importance of lane position, safety, 
reaction times, turning, all those things, all those skills that I thought I had, that really I didn't have at all. I took the motorcycle seat, of course. And I guess the rest is history. I've just been riding the 7.8 ever since. Looking to upgrade. I will shut up and quit boring you guys now. I do appreciate everybody coming along for this journey. I really do. There's neutral. Found neutral. You guys like what I do? Leave a comment below and let me know. Share the video if you'd like. You know, this might be the video that might convince your wife that you need a motorcycle. You never know. It might be a public service for you. You might say, see? Watch this guy, honey. Watch how happy he is. And he's riding in 90 degree heat and he's not even complaining. You wife would be like, you're going to kill yourself on that thing. You're going to die. And then you get it. And you throw her on the back. And she guys absolutely loves it. That's what's going to happen if you share my video with her. Or him. That's what's going to happen. I guarantee you. Many a motorcycle rider has been born by watching YouTube videos. I'm just kidding. I have no idea if that's going to happen. I'm delirious. But anyway, guys, I am going to end this. I hope everybody has a wonderful Sunday. I'm going to go home, figure out something good for breakfast, have a cup of coffee. Just chill. Edit this video, put it out for you so that you can enjoy. I hope everybody is having a great day today. And I want to thank everybody for the, who's watching. Don't forget if you like what I do, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any Honda Shadow 750 adventures. Soon to be BTX adventures to come. Alright guys, everybody take care, have a wonderful day, remember, remember, it is not what you ride, it's not what you ride, it's if you ride, now Timmy 66 for me and my shadow, I'm out for now.